Hey guys, Kane Paisley here, and today I'm coming at you with five licks to help spice up your rate technique. If you're not already familiar with the raking technique, it's a way we can add some emphasis to a note by dragging through the strings either side of it. Adds a really nice sort of percussive effect to it. Usually we'd use muted strings for that, but we can use ghost notes or fully fretted notes to create some pretty interesting sounds. If you've been playing blues or rock for a while now, you've probably already encountered this technique. And it's a go-to move when we're trying to channel those Stevie Ray Vaughan vibes, which, let's face it, we all do. Now I could sit and do that all day long, but I noticed players like Albert Collins and Otis Rush using the technique pretty creatively. So I wanted to put together a few licks to give you a few ideas of how you can maybe expand on your use of it. So before jumping into these licks, let's have a quick look at the technique itself. So a basic rake, if I aim for this high E at the 12th fret, what I'm going to do is sort of mute the three strings, maybe only two, uh, before it and then fret that at the end. And I'm strumming through in one movement, one continuous movement, and it's gonna all kind of come out as one sound. So it's just kind of like that one note with that over the top. And the way I like to explain this to students is it's kind of like saying the word rake, but you're rolling the R. Rake, rake. So it's still one word and one syllable, but rake. So an exercise I like to get students to practice, uh, to master that, is going down a pentatonic scale, and doing an E again here, but doing each of those notes with rakes. So you notice I'm doing those dead notes before each one. Now when I do these dead notes with other fingers, probably still muting with my first finger, maybe a little bit of extra fingers behind, it's gonna take some practice that, if you haven't done that before. And then what I'd also then do is get them to rake upwards, up picking, down the rest of the scale, that lower part of it. And you'll find like there I got some open string noise, I'm being pretty messy with that. Really go for it with this, you know, it's a big like expressive technique. Don't worry about it if it's a bit messy, as long as that main note is sounding really, really strong, then it's hopefully going to land on its feet. Okay, lick number one, we're up at the 10th fret in our trusty minor pentatonic sort of box. Uh, this is in D. So I'm going to start off with a bar at the 10th fret across the top two strings. And I'm going to hammer on on the second string to this C note, our flat seven, uh, in the 13th fret. And we get that twice. That's coming in on the end of three. One, two, three, and four, and one. And the second one. I'm using my little finger, you could use your third finger. So it's just like a little grace note hammer, like picking the hammer instantly, gives it that rushing sort of feel. And then we're going to come down a set of four notes. And that's our 10, 10, 12, we're going to pull off to 10, and then 12 again. Come down those strings, but it's all one sort of upstroke, that's our rake. There's actually a tiny little pause in the picking. We're kind of going through those three as one, then we're going to pause the split second to get that pull off to the 12 and our last note. And we're just targeting that to end on two, is the idea. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two. Roughly around that second beat. Those notes, they're not a strict timing. One thing worth thinking about with these rakes is how I've notated them. Now I could write it like a chord and have this symbol going alongside it to indicate we're dragging through the strings in whichever direction uh, to hit that target note. And that would work with cross note heads for the dead notes. 
With these, because I've used hammer-ons and pull-offs, I've written them as like very quick single notes, and I've tried to approximate the sound as close as I can, but it has resulted in some pretty awkward looking rhythms. So the rhythms can be pretty fluid with these, so long as the target notes, you're hitting them kind of mostly on the beat that we're aiming for. Number two, short and sweet, this one. Um, we're in sort of shape five of our pentatonic scale, if we're thinking in boxes. And I'm starting off now at a bar at the end of the fret. You're gonna notice a lot of similarities in terms of the physical movements we're doing in these licks. Uh, doing the same sort of grace note hammer, this time to the 10th fret on that second string, which is our fifth in this case, uh, interval-wise. And then, similar idea, Four notes this time, so that's our eight, ten, pull off to eight, and then ten. And it's ju you just got to practice that, get it as smooth as you can, and then just build up that speed until it sounds like just one smooth sound. three very similar to lick number two in terms of the note choices and the rhythm uh, it's more the positioning that's changed so lick number two was coming out of box five that sort of area lick number three is now all the way up in box number two it's looping round the rhythm's the same I've just added one more note on the fourth beat one two three and one, two, and four. Just like a concluding sort of thing. And what's nice with that is that changing of the of the fretting gives it a different feel. And obviously, being in a different position in the neck is going to change how you connect that uh, to other ideas. One observation with these licks is that there are some parallels to sweep picking, which is obviously a very different sort of technique, and usually for a very different sort of sound. But what's really cool with this is where sweep picking, you're aiming for very even notes running through the strings. This gives us like little bursts of speed. It's just kind of like a hurry up and wait, you know, and we get that nice push pull sort of effect. Now you want to be in control of that so it doesn't just sound like uh, you're just doing lazy sweeping. But that's kind of a good approach to it. And it does have its own characteristic sound. This one's potentially the trickiest of the bunch. We're still up in our second shape of the D minor pentatonic scale. I'm starting off up here with my bar on the 13th fret, hammering onto this root note at the 15th on the second string. And I'm just kind of milking that. Going back to the bar and then the grace note again. Then our raking movement is there. So I've got a pull off idea again within it. And I kind of see that as looking like an like an F chord, you know, right? off an F chord. And then down to that D root again. And that one I find uh, it's quite hard to get that that pull off to there in time. Feels very rushed. Okay, lick number 
five, we're back into our shape one area of our D minor pentatonic. And we're gonna have two rakes in this one, we're doubling it up. And ending with a very standard bluesy sort of phrase. Uh, so doubling them up is obviously just another choice. And what's really nice with that is that it's the same physical movement across two different sets of strings. So it's very comfortable uh, feeling to your fingers once you've got one of those. Uh, and we've actually already done this shape elsewhere. So that's uh, our 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12. It's just a nice, you know, it's always alternating those frets basically, but it's the speed of it. If you were to try and alternate pick that, it, it just wouldn't have the same sound or same feel. That uh, breaking through it really gives it a cool sound. And that little phrase at the end, thanks for checking out this video if you've enjoyed it please make sure you hit like and subscribe and hit the little bell button so you get notifications whenever i put out more videos another legendary player who does use this technique in a very different sort of way was frank zappa and i'm going to do a video on uh, looking at that in a little more depth as well pretty soon Remember, you can follow me on social media so you can keep track of what other guitar-related things I'm getting up to. And please consider checking out my Patreon page, where you'll be able to get access to things like the tab files for these licks, the backing track I've been using, and you can get access to another video where I go into a bit more depth about the technique and the theory that's going on in all of this. On top of all of that, you'd be supporting me to keep making more videos. Thanks again for checking it out, and I hope to see you all again very soon.